Hey, you threw me a curve there. Sorry. The timer came up and was like, you have 10 minutes left, and that's not enough time. <laughs> Perfect. All right. So let's, oh. All right. So they'll all come back in a second. Hi, everybody who's waiting for us to start. <laughs> All right, David's back. Back, unmute yourself, David. Waiting. Hello. I'm back. <laughs> All right, everyone's back. I'm back. We're good. Okay. Cool. All right. So again, <laughs> welcome back to our panel on designing naturally. Um, make sure again, if you just need to adjust to turn it back onto speaker view in the top right corner. Um, I have with me Guy Regal of Guy Regal NYC, steamed Hi, in. Hi everyone. Turn up your dealer. Um, and then David Scott of David Scott Interiors. Hello. And then we have John Graytack of Studio Graytack. Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining us. So I'd first love to get to know just to lay the groundwork a little bit. I understand that Guy you and John have a working relationship together. So I'd love to get to know a little bit more about how that began. And in particular, Guy, what kind of struck you about John's work at Studio Great Tech? Well, happily, we were introduced through my colleague, Nicole Caput, and some of John's colleagues came in to show sort of their pieces, and they had a sort of a video demonstration, and the pieces were absolutely gorgeous. It was like looking more at a catalog of fine jewelry or a museum presentation, and that was just the minerals themselves, and then when they showed me the exceptional quality of the decorative arts, the way they incorporated them into furniture and lighting. Uh, it was, it took, I wanted them, I fell in love right at the beginning. I wanted them right from the start. I, uh, they, they smartly took a moment to decide. Um, and then happily it was a sort of a meeting of the minds. The, the reason I was so in love with their work wasn't just the quality, but it was because of what my clients have been asking for, which is, unique, one-of-a-kind pieces, very fine quality, very unique, that they can feel work with their, you know, their environment. So people are sort of using contemporary with mid-century, with older pieces, and it's all master fine artwork. So John and his team work at the level of any of the finest master designers of the 20th century. So that's down to the, the workmanship on the, like the screen behind me, this uh, Brazilian Malachite, a uh, Brazilian agate screen behind me, is polished bronze, it's refined wood, the, each piece is set so well. So it stands the way it would with a, a Ruhlman screen or a Ruhlman table or something else of the 20th century, a Giopanis design piece. He, they stand in that level. And to have a new artisan come out who has that level of expertise and quality and then bring crystals and minerals, which are so unique to find, into it, I just, I, it was, I was so thrilled that they chose me as the dealer to represent them. Thank you. Thank you, Guy. That was very nice. <laughs> yeah. And then, John, obviously your work is firmly entrenched in the natural world. So can you tell me a bit more about your creative process and how you take inspiration from nature to make these pieces? Absolutely. Um, I was fortunate. I grew up in Montana in the midst of a very beautiful state with surrounded by nature. And that's where I draw my inspiration. Um, this morning, I just came in from my ranch and I was out walking the property yesterday. And that is where I really draw my inspiration from is being in nature and listening to nature and hearing what nature has to say and then trying to apply that to design. So that's really our starting point is always using nature and its elements to incorporate into our design. And are there any like particular stones that you take inspiration from? I know you've said before that like it kind of starts with the stone or the crystal itself. It does. Um, yeah, uh, pick your favorite stones. A, a little bit. Picking your favorite child. Um, but one of my favorites is Malachite Azurite. And that's the uh, piece I have in my hand here. I don't know how well you can see it. it's sparkling. It is um, the gateway to the heavens is what the ancient Chinese always refer to it as. And uh, it's where we got our blues and our greens for makeup and paint in the 17th century. 
And it's one of my favorites. It gives me a ton of inspiration. And um, I'd have to say that's one of my favorites. And then uh, it's always hard to go wrong with just a beautiful crystal. Um, Cause that's a very clean energy and um, it's easy to work with and it's very inspirational. So those would be two of my favorites. Right. And these have like a healing element to them as well. Can you talk a little bit more about yes, that? Yes, um, they do. Uh, for example, the agates in the screen behind Guy, um, one of their best qualities is they, they're, they emit a frequency and they're very calming. That's what agates are known for. So if you put an agate, or in this case, 16 agates in your space, it has a very calming effect and gets rid of negative energy. Um, so all the crystals have different properties, but that's what agates in particular are known for. And the Brazilian agates are the finest in the world and they're at the top of that. So that's what's comp composed in the screen behind Guy right there, if you can see it. <laughs> and those were all hand curated and hand selected by us. Uh, through a series of miners, actually. So th that was uh, a process to get those slices and get them the same size was a unique challenge. I can imagine. <laughs> you doing an excellent job at showing it, <laughs> modeling it for us. <laughs> <laughs> Vanna White is over here. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, David, I'd love to hear a bit from you about what designing naturally means to you and perhaps a few examples of projects that you've worked on recently where that's been a big priority for your clients? So as John mentioned, uh, I turn to nature um, all the time in my work. Uh, it's just so rich with feeling and, um, you know, I'm able to develop color schemes and um, entire like emotional backgrounds for our work and, and um, just the idea of minerals and uh, these exquisite, you know, things that come from the earth uh, are a, just a really amazing thing to work with. And uh, recently I collaborated with an artist, um, Silas Sandel, who is a New York artist, and I'm sure Guy knows him. We and him. we, yeah. in fact, you, you do, right? Mm -hmm. And he's a bit of a quirky, interesting guy. And uh, we had a client who um, very much loves uh, crystals and minerals. And we created a screen and I talked him into doing something. It's actually um, 11 feet tall. It's a sliding screen that um, is basically over a television. And we have beautiful slices of agate um, that have been incorporated into the melted bronze. Um, so Ooh. it's really beautiful. Sounds like it would be. Yeah, it's, it's uh, something that we'll eventually have photographs of and it'll, it's uh, just been installed. Um, and then um, recently we um, had a visit from uh, John in our studio in New York and um, he, brought some gorgeous boxes that and bowls and things and um, I found one that I thought was really perfect for a client and we um, showed that to her and she just fell in love with it immediately. It's a beautiful uh, quartz or rock crystal bowl that has, um, I don't know if it's, is it azurite in it? And then there's this beautiful gemstone like cut um, just like a ring, you know, put on in it mm -hmm. and it just sits in, um, on a table in their um, bedroom next to a chaise. And it's her favorite thing in the whole apartment. So it's really, yes, it's, it's it does this look that, it's not that, but. You can see the interior, the way they attach the, the top section with all that detail on the inside, um, the way that the, it's so beautifully crafted. This is yeah. gilded wood on the top and then they layered it with uh, uh, malachite and crystals all the way around. Hopefully this is showing well enough for everyone to see. Yeah. It looks it's gorgeous. And I have to tell you that it, you, you can't stop touching and looking at them. Yeah. You know, they're, they're, they're so 
uh, you gravitate so much to them. So it's the energy of the piece itself, and then it's this exquisite um, artisanal way of putting it all together and creating these beautiful uh, objets. So, uh, and as Guy said, that finding these unique things and bringing those to interiors is a really important part of what we do. And, and, uh, and, and it brings a lot of joy to people. And David, you, yeah. work with, you work with your clients. It always seems to me that they're trying to have the only one. I mean, you were mentioning before we started about the fact that they had to have a, their own unique fabric, their own unique piece of furniture, their own. And so I would think that the Studio Gratex pieces would work really well with that, wouldn't you say? Yes. And I think that, you know, one of the things I'm known for is creating interiors that are so personal and you know, they're not, we don't repeat the same thing. They're really about the individuals. And so that home then becomes part of their lives and, and meshed in that and, and they're never um, trendy. So mm -hmm. and things like this um, are never going to be trendy, you know. David, <laughs> may I ask you a question? Sure. I am finding that the requests from people to have more natural elements in their home, or maybe perhaps for the first time they're wanting to bring natural elements into the design, it seems to be at an all time high. And it seems to be trending that way. Can you speak to that? Are you finding that to be the case as well? Oh, absolutely. I think as people become more aware um, of the healing properties of um, natural things, particularly crystal, um, and I think that there's just something about being surrounded in like things that are not really man-made. They may be, um, you know, touched by man, right? And, and, you know, manipulated in some way, but they really are on their own um, perfect. So I think that there's an attraction to that. There's, uh, that, that it isn't, art, there's no artifice. You know, it really is something that, has um, a you know deep, much deeper meaning, and so people connect to that. And with the advent of a much you know of wellness and the importance of that in our homes, and obviously with the you know pandemic that we're facing, there's a more inward search towards um, you know health and wellness and and calm and cleansing and all of those things that these minerals do. So there's no question that, like I think every interior going forward, we're always, we usually have some type of crystal in them, but I think there'll be more and more and, um, and people are definitely requesting that. Uh, we just did a meditation room for a client uh, that has, you know, lots of crystals in it. Um, there's, you know, there are, there's just a lot more awareness for sure. That's what I'm finding too, and I just thought you probably were finding that as well. I want to point out another, just because we're on the subject of, of just unique pieces. That Look are at that. Look at that. This is a piece of citrine. Uh, it's got this wonderful snail shell over here that's been embedded with jewelry as well. Uh, hopefully this is coming across on camera. Then this wonderful sort of cup, that could, this bowl that could be used for something. Again, John, I actually am not sure what this piece is on the... Uh, you're, you're an agate. It's agate, it is yeah. agate. And then, John, there's this beautifully sort of hammered silver that's going on on the inside, I believe. Yeah, the stamped metal there, yes. Which uh, almost, has, uh, it almost has sort of a, a Midwestern India, Indian, sort of Native American Indian influence in it. Uh, again, just an object that has the powers that we were just talking about also can be used, but it just it sort of accomplishes so much in the room. And it's like an environment into itself. Look, it's, it, it's, yeah. it's, it's a world. When you just look at that, you just fall into it, right? You're just looking at, there's turquoise and there's ammonite and the crystals and, the, and this beautiful bowl that's now been attached through this gorgeous way of uh, balancing the metal and then embedded with, um, you know, precious stones. It's just really, they're so you unique. Detailing the way the stand is done with this beautifully uh, honed, this, these, these pieces of the metal at the bottom, everything is just done to perfection. 
Yes, and then we have to add a little felt to that, you know, because we don't want any scratching. Absolutely, <laughs> thank you. Everything, by the way, on wood should have felt below. That's an important yes. Thing yes. Little secret there. Yeah. Good. Absolutely. Good hack. Um, John, I know you mentioned that the demand for natural materials is at an all-time high right now. Are there any like crystals in particular that people are demanding more and more, or is it just kind of an increase overall? I think it's an increase overall, but the um, crystals that seem to be, if they're just wanting just crystals and they're not necessarily incorporating into a designed piece, I would say your amethyst and just your basic uh, quartz crystals are the most popular, but it, they seem to be kind of the, uh, you get gem fever is what it's called, and they seem to be, I'll call it the gateway drug. Those are the ones people start with. <laughs> and that causes the inspiration, if you will. And then all of a sudden they want a larger variety of the minerals and it leads kind of down a, a rabbit hole journey that may never end. And that's where I find myself on that journey and getting my inspiration from, and I love it. Don's being modest. I've been, I've been uh, lucky enough to see his collection and he's got a world-renowned museum collection of rare minerals, crystals. Uh, it's, 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 in, it's, it's an enormous room that's you know, the size of a sort of a hanger, air, you know, air hanger of just extraordinary pieces. Uh, they probably at one point should be put in the rounds of going to the different museums around the country because they're that fine. We're actually working on that, thank you. We're at, we are actually working on that. Good. Um, thank can, you. Can you show us more of those exquisite Creations? Do you have more of them? Yeah, I have a few on my left here. Um, you know what? Bring that malachite and uh, black. I guess that's malachite and lapis. Um, the thing that's suspended. Uh, yeah, but also, like, you know, are there any other boxes or these uh, incredible. My, works my of colleague art? Nicole is running around the gallery looking. Okay, because they are. I do really want to show the detail of the way that. this is set with on wood with this sort of polished movement, and then it's just standing there and it's just it's so wonderful and just the way it's just presented the ingenious way this is put together is that, co is that copper uh that's malachite oh. azurite and it is a copper byproduct and the quality of that would um of that mineral would be it encourages your soul for um action and change in your life so that's kind of an inspirational piece that would be well placed on an office desk or, well, in today's world, maybe the home office desk, uh, since so many of us are working from home. It's kind of an inspirational piece to affect positive change in one's life. I have to show you this because this is something they're doing. They're doing these sort of extraordinary glass bases. You see this beautiful base of glass, sort of moldy glass, and then it's just a simple piece of exquisite malachite. And sometimes you don't need to do all the jewels and everything to just have it stand there and be exceptional, which is what this is successfully doing. And Guy, what does something like that cost? Uh, this is not crazy. I think this is about 4,500, something in that so, range. To have something so unique and, and so beautifully presented. I think this one is the one I'm about to pull up, which is actually my favorite. Nicole just ran to the back of the shop to find this piece. Um, again, I don't know if this is going to jump out on camera the way I'm seeing it in person. Oh, wow. But this is just, I get lost in staring at it. This is a, this is a painting. I mean, this is a three-dimensional painting made by nature. Um, and then again on the glass base. And not, ter I think this is, uh, I think this is in the 2800, 3200 range. And John, what is that? material. What that is also malachite azurite and the Chinese uh, referred to that mineral as the gateways to the heaven and, and as he was holding it there and giving it a rotation you can see those crystals firing and sparkling and if you could picture the nighttime sky on a clear night where you're looking at the stars you get it like okay that's the gateway to the heavens. I mean imagine this in your home and then you had candles going at night the way this would feel. I just it never stops fascinating me. This is probably, for me personally, just as, a, as an object, I just love it so much. Well, and that's the one I picked up. Ah. I, mine's not firing as much as yours, but it is just as jemmy, but I don't have a good light on it. But again, 
it speaks to my soul and that is one of my favorites and right Alina had asked me that earlier and you're now using it as a reference so thank you that was well done <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to try something, guys, real fast, because I just, I, this is not what I was thinking about doing, but I do want to try to do this. Um, this is a table. So they do, besides the screen, they do furniture. And uh, forgive me, because this is going to be a little bit clumsy. But this is, this is a table that is, you know, wood with bronze inset, okay? And then the... John, you're gonna have to help me with what the stone is hanging in. Um, I'm a little perplexed. Just, okay, we're at we're at Agate again with the uh, amethyst in the middle there. So, so uh, agates and amethyst and crystals are often together, and that one happens to have both going on. So this and this piece as a table, as a design with the sort of the Greek key influence. I don't know if you can see that under my hand, uh, but this as a piece of furniture, as a design itself their work is, is, is just very smartly done. It's not just put it on a stand, but basically turn it into an object, turn it into a table. Uh, they do cabinets where, where uh, we've got some wonderful coffee tables that they've done that are exceptional. We have one that's too big for me to bring over, but it's a massive piece of amethyst set into a piece of glass that's been etched around so that the amethyst sets right in and the glass conforms to the amethyst. And then that it's, those two are then sort of set on a bronze support with wood base in a very sort of late 40s, I'd say, sort of late deco, early mid-century design. Uh, and, and just, uh, you've got a cabinet that's similar. And then of course, I'm going to only say that they are working right now on their new line, which will be launching here at the, at the gallery in mid-November that is taking the workmanship and the quality that they've already done, that they've already been able to show us, to a level that I personally have not seen in the industry. David, this is going to blow your mind. The idea of they're utilizing organic influences, erosion influences, uh, they're working with glass that I can tell you, I don't know, those watching, there's a great uh, glass designer out of Italy, Giro, and I can tell you that Giro's gonna be super jealous because I have not seen the, the way they've created this glass before. It's utterly, completely unique, and they've figured out a way of taking this extraordinary glass and putting into it a piece of phenomenal mineral crystal that I'm going out of my way to not use certain words, but, this is, I couldn't be more excited about what's coming down the road. If this looks gorgeous, what's going to be arriving is from, is, is going to be earth shattering as far as the when is that happening. Yeah. November 15th is the opening. Uh, you may see snippets and hints before then, but the official opening, show opening, which will be virtual because of the COVID, uh, but we're redoing the whole gallery to show these pieces off and it will be uh, a fully, uh, in, you will be able to walk into it virtually and physically because the uh, 200 Lexi NYDC is open for visiting by appointment and just kind of walk in. And so that will happen in the middle of November. We are so excited to launch at your gallery. And we've been, this has been a project that's been going on for over two years. So to have it coming to fruition so quickly Matter of fact, some of the first stuff has already shipped and arrived at your gallery. Not anymore. And it's been put into the warehouse so nobody can come in and spy. We are keeping it <laughs> out, of, out of sight, out of mind until then. Because I would be very, it would be very difficult for me to have it in the gallery and not want to show it and sell it because I, I want to show it to everybody. I appreciate you holding back on it because I do want the big grand reveal. So thank you, Guy. I appreciate that. Thank you, Nicole, as well. She Not says thank you. And you're but welcome. we're most excited. We're most excited. So thank you. Is there anything else you can tease about it, John? Or do you want to keep it like as much of a surprise? Um, okay, yeah, I can add a little bit to it without giving too much away. Um, our original line, which uh, Guy was so nice to share with everybody, uh, was a little bit more literal. The tables look like tables. The screen looks like a screen. Y'all, you know what it is directly. The new pieces are a little more in situ. Uh, they're more inspired from nature. 
they're more um, art based and less function. And uh, each piece will stand in a home as art. And not that some of these won't current ones, but the, the new line uh, is at a different level altogether in terms of art. But it can be used. It's not just to be- Yeah, know, it's functional art. Table, it may feel like a piece of art, but it's a piece of art that you still can put something on. Uh, and just so you know, this is going to include lighting, uh, both wall light and sort of, sort of standing light, as well as uh, furniture, meaning a table and other things that I'm trying to go out of my way not to talk about. But there'll be some wall pieces as well as some floor pieces. And are you working, John, with a um, particular glass blower, or is that a um, or how is it? Is it is it is it cast? Is it what is it? It's slumped glass. Slumped. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I'm proud to say that all of our artisans are uh, Montana based, and probably in a 40 mile radius of where I sit oh, now. So it's it's homegrown. All of our artisans are homegrown, and we're very proud of that. Not only made Beautiful. in America, but made in Montana. And you know, most people aren't that familiar with Montana, let alone the quality of artisans that our state actually holds. Because a lot of people move here for the lifestyle. Uh, you know, they they might not have as many opportunities, but they want that quality of life. So we've tapped into this artistry base that is just unbelievable so yeah i'm very proud to say that all of the artisans are very local i can i was out there and i met them and i have to say they're as passionate as you'd want to see in an artisan and so happy to be given these projects i mean they all work as a you feel it's a family working together on this all these different people and john and his team it's a it's a it's a real inner inner meshing of design and, and execution Thank you. I do feel like we're a family. We've grown very tight through this journey and I feel like they're just as vested as we are and it, it makes for a very beautiful team. Isn't that the best part of what we do in design is that it's a collaboration always and we end up being like a family, all of us, you know, from um, our shared love of beautiful things and the patience and care and desire that goes into creating these amazing objects and, and uh, you know, great things for people's lives. Well, the industry we're in, David, I mean, you and I, I don't want to date us, but we go back a, a couple of, you know, a few decades here and uh, yeah, three. And, you know, um, I will just plug one thing. My daughter Lucy is on, is watching this and David happily has been an influence in her life. She's Hi. one. Hi, Lucy. And Hi, Lucy. Hi. <laughs> 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 anyway, I just, uh, you know, David, you couldn't be more accurate about the industry. And I just hope that the, as a whole outside of us, we all remember what a family and how lucky we are to be in doing something. Well, and I always tell my team, it's about the journey. It's yeah. about the journey. Enjoy the journey. Enjoy the people we meet along the way. Because one day when we look back, that's going to be the part we remember the most is the beautiful people we met along the way. And Guy, it is over three decades. <laughs> we were little boys. Oh my God, we were I was so young. I mean, it's been, it's incredible. I mean, I've been very happy to watch. David's career has been extraordinary because of the projects that he's found himself, rightfully so, being involved in. These, these projects are just mind blowing and he's just been lucky enough to have clients that have been so enthused with him, again, rightfully so, to allow the create, him to be so creative and really push the envelope. Uh, you, you, you really deserve what's happened to you and what you've Thank accomplished. You. And, uh, you know, and you're, you're, you know, we all love you. So that's part of it. I've enjoyed watching you for the last three years, David. It's just been fun to be an outside observer watching your journey. Thank you. Um, you know, it is a journey, as you said, and, and, and we really, um, you know, sometimes we're in that individual day, right? Where you're dealing with all the things you have to deal with. And the best and most important thing I think I've learned through COVID is that at the end of the day or the beginning of the day, step back 
and kind of take it all in and look at it as a whole and not look at all the little things that go wrong or that maybe you wanted to do differently or somebody said something or it didn't turn out right or, you know, just all those little pitfalls that we have that sometimes can bring us down. And um, it's just so important for us to, to look at things as, as, as the journey and as a, as a, as a, a totality and, um, and the relationships and that they're strong and they're as strong as we want them to be, you know, we're all capable of it. We just have to do it. And, right? and yeah, commit to it and take the time to do it. You're, yeah. you're exactly right, David. Yeah. And I think it's that positive that's, words, David, thank you for saying yeah. that. You need these. Yeah, well, one day this you. COVID will actually be behind us. It doesn't seem like it now, but one day it will actually be behind us. Well, with all these crystals and minerals and this positive energy, I think we're pushing it away just with that alone. <laughs> we're to the success. Yeah, for sure. Well, that, I think that's the perfect note <laughs> to end on, is that this will all, like COVID will end, and we have these natural elements to keep us company in the meantime, and it's just a journey. So thank you guys so much. I really appreciate thank it. Thank you. Alina, thank you. And thank again. you, Rob Report. <laughs> Yeah, of course. Thank you, Rob Report. Thank you, Alina. You did a great job. We love, and we all loved the background that, that you have with the paintings behind you. Yes. <laughs> we were talking about the great start of the meeting, and it's it's been lovely to look at. Yeah, I'll let my roommate know that, uh, that you all are fans. <laughs> of her work. Um, but thank you guys, and um, thank you everyone for tuning in. And have a great rest of your Fridays. <laughs> thank you, everybody. I enjoyed thank it you. very much. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.